Hello, welcome to this section of Mastering Statistics. Here we're going to learn about something called the stem and leaf plot or the stem and leaf diagram. Um, it's just another way to represent raw data. It's something you might run across. It's not something that's used all the time, but it's interesting. It's fun to do, I think. You'll probably be asked about it. So in order to do it, instead of write a definition, I want to just sort of give you some data. It's easier to see how this works than it is to explain it. So um, if you have ACT scores, uh, these are tests that you, you, know, you take when you, when you go on into college, right? ACT scores. So if I just had some raw data, let's just say I collected this data from a sample of kids that I asked. Um, 18, 23, 24, 31, 19. These are their ACT scores. And I have a bunch of data here. So 27, 26, 22, 32, and 18. Here I have 35, 27, 29. 24, 20, here I have 18, 17, 21, 25, and 26. So let's, let's say we have those. And I want to create a stem and leaf diagram. Now, of course, we could do a histogram here. See these, these different ways of representing data. It's not like one is vastly superior than the other necessarily. It's just different ways to represent data. We could create some classes. We could look at the frequency of these different scores, uh, different buckets. And then we could, um, we could make a histogram, which is a graphical representation of this data. That'd be great. Um, but here we're going to do a stem and leaf plot. So what we have is we have what we call the stem, right? And then we have the leaf, or the leaves. So basically, in a stem and leaf plot, um, it retains the original data. The leaf is the last digit of the data. The stem is the rest. So the leaf here is the last digit. See, here's an 8, here's a 7, here's a 5, here's an 8, here's a 7, here's a 7, here's a 6. These are the leaves. In this case, we only have two-digit data, so everything else, which is the first digit in this case, is what we call the stem. So if I were going to write that down, all right, the stem here, let's say, is a 1. So now I look at everything with a 1 is the first digit. In this case, I have an 18. So for the leaf, it's gonna be the last digit will be an eight. I don't have anything, okay, here I have a one. So I have a nine over here. Now notice that my stem is still a one. So here's 18, one when you put it together with the eight gives you 18. One when you put it together with the nine gives you 19. I continue to scan down, and here I have another 18. So I'm gonna put an eight here. I'm gonna to continue to scan, here I have another one in the front, so I'm going to put an 8 here. Here I have a 7, and that's really it. It's 8, 9, 8, 8, 7. So what this is telling me is everything that begins with a 1 in my list of data, I have listed here. 1, 8, which is 18. 1, 9, which is 19. Here's 18 again, 18 again, and 17. So I scan through my data. The last digit here is called the leaf, and everything else is called the stem. So then I go and look at a new stem that begins with the number 2. And I see I have a 23 here, so I put a 3 here. I have a 24 here, so I put a 4 here. I don't have any more here, but I have a 27, so a 7 goes here. 26, so a 6 goes here. A 22, so that goes here. I scan down, I have a 27 over here. I have a 29 over here. I have a 24 over here. I have a 20, so I put a 0 for that. I scan down here, I have a 1, a 5, and a 6. So I have a 5 and a six right here. So right away, you can see that most of your data so far seems to fall in the 20s because I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 uh, elements or 12 scores.